Hello, welcome to The Repair Specialist, and this video is all about a hot topic that's been going on on YouTube for the past few months, and that is whether WD-40 can be used as engine oil. And quite recently, there's been some really good YouTube videos testing WD-40 on engines physically, and the results from the different videos I've seen are all very similar. Whilst WD-40 does seem to keep the engine running from cold for a little while, it does eventually result in some engine damage and fails to maintain the engine's health if you like. And this video is all about explaining why that is. Okay, so before I explain why WD-40 fails to maintain engine integrity, I need to explain something very important about all oils, it's viscosity. And most of us know if we look at the two extreme ends of the spectrum, that any given oil can either have a low viscosity, which is a thin consistency, or a high viscosity, which is a thick consistency. And one major influence on any given oil's viscosity is temperature. And I'll explain where WD-40 falls in very shortly. But generally, the colder a given oil is, the thicker it is. And so that will produce the highest viscosity that that particular oil can have. And so on the other end of the scale, the hotter the oil, then the thinner it will become, producing the lowest viscosity it can produce for that particular type of oil. And although WD-40 is still thin when it's cold, as you know, it's still thicker in its cold state compared to when it's hot. And so with that in mind, let's have a look at what's going on in an engine with WD-40 in it. So at the bottom here of this engine, we've got WD-40 as the oil. And so what needs to happen from a cold start is this oil needs to travel up these oilways through the filter and to all the components of the engine as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And the quicker the oil can do this, the better, because as soon as we start, we've got metal moving against metal without any lubrication from the oil, just for the first few moments. So let's just take a look at the oiling of the crankshaft for an example. And let's look at this area here, the big end bearing. Of course, when the engine starts turning, the big end bearing needs a lubricating and it receives its lubricating oil from the sump of the engine through the oilway here. And so the quicker it receives it, the better. And I'll explain that a little further by looking at this area of the big end as a cross-sectional view from this angle. Okay, so this is the whole big end and we've got the conrod at the top leading up to the piston and the cap. And the crankshaft's main journal is in the centre here. This is only a diagrammatical illustration of course, but there are oilways that supply the big end bearing with oil. In a main bearing with a good state of repair, the gap here wouldn't be anything like this. I've only shown it this way for illustrative purposes, which you'll see in a moment. But what I'm trying to explain is that before oil is brought up to the big end bearing here, there is metal to metal contact. So through special oilways, when the engine is started, oil starts to travel up through the oilways into the big end bearing here and it starts to lubricate all around the big end bearing separating the two metal surfaces from each other. And that's why I showed a gap between the two surfaces there so I could overemphasize and show it clearly what actually happens. And so the illustration here now is that this is well lubricated. So in the case of WD-40 being a low viscosity, so thin, even when it's cold, it means it can be pumped or flow through much easier the components of the engine and offer this type of protection from an initial cold start. But remember what we said earlier, even though it's got a low viscosity when it's cold, at the same time it is at its thickest when it's cold. And so what I'm getting at is, when it gets hot, it gets even thinner than what it is when it's cold. And of course WD-40 isn't designed in the way engine oil is to run engines anyway. So let's imagine the engine's just started then and there is a micro layer of WD-40 between those two metals stopping them from contacting each other. Which is what we said we needed to prevent engine damage and seizing. And the oil needs to have a certain film strength, a certain stickiness to stay in there between those two parts so it keeps offering lubrication. And indeed the likelihood is that WD-40 would provide this in the initial starting and running of the engine. But as the engine starts to get hotter and the already thin WD-40 oil starts to get even thinner due to the heat of the engine, then it would be so thin that it wouldn't stay between the two component parts long enough. It would just flow through so quickly then drop out of that middle there that the two components the two metal components would actually start rubbing together again, basically resulting in the kind of engine damage we see 
when engines run low on oil. Another issue that would arise, and indeed some people have proved this, is that the WD-40 that lies in the sump here would start to disappear. It would start to be used by the engine. And that's because its viscosity is so thin, especially when it's hot, that it would work its way up the cylinder as the piston raises and lowers and pass the piston rings and end up at the top of the piston here where it would be combusted, creating a whole lot of smoke, whilst at the same time reducing the efficiency of the engine. And of course, that would result in one thing again. It would result in the engine running low on oil and cause seizing of the components. And so going back to viscosity where we said when the oil is cold it's thick and when it's hot it's thinner. And so to explain very basically and to state the obvious, the way engine oils are designed to deal with the problem of becoming too thin when it's hot, and I'm using an example of an SAE 30 single grade oil here, is that the oil itself is thicker to begin with. So it's thicker when it's cold, so when it actually does get hot it's not too thin. And so this, as well as other special ingredients that make up the oil, allow it to maintain a structural integrity to give this kind of lubrication when the engine is hot. And as I've said, that was an example of a single grade engine oil. And there are many different types, of course, not just the one I've shown. But a single grade type engine oil isn't usually what's used in cars. It's usually for smaller engines like lawn mowers. And anyone who has a little knowledge about car engines and engine oils knows that we generally use a multi-grade oil in a car engine. And what sets a multi-grade oil apart from WD-40 in a car engine, or indeed a single grade oil, is that multi-grade oil cleverly works as two different viscosities of oil. Taking a look at the example here, a 5W30. This means that this oil is capable of working with a viscosity like an SAE5, so a low viscosity and thin in the cold, and an SAE30 when it's hot. And basically what I mean by that is, when this oil's hot, it acts like a SAE30 viscosity oil would do when it's hot, rather than when the 5 is hot. The SAE5 viscosity of this oil is there to be used in the cold to get all of that oil up to the components as quickly as possible from cold, so it's thin when it's cold, and then when it's hot, it acts more like an SAE30 would act in the hot even though it's really thin and runny when it's hot, it only gets as thin and runny when it's hot as an SAE 30 gets. So it doesn't get too runny, as it would do if it stayed like an SAE 5. Because in that situation where it stayed as an SAE 5, we wouldn't get the lubrication again that we need in the bearings and it would start to drop out like we've seen before with the WD 40. Perhaps not quite as bad, but it would do eventually. And at the same time, we'd start to see the effect here on the sump oil. It would start to disappear and go up past the piston rings here and then it would burn, creating lots of smoke. And when it does that and reduces the sump oil, then we've got little oil in there for lubrication of the engine and we're going to start to see the engine seize. Pretty much the same as we saw with the WD-40. So is WD-40 good? Well, in my opinion, yes. When using it for what it was designed for, that is, and unseizing component parts that are rusty, driving out moisture, loosening rusty bolts, and that sort of thing. There are, of course, many other applications for WD-40 that I haven't mentioned, and that just goes to show how versatile this is. The only thing is, in my opinion, it was never designed to run engines on. And that's kind of been shown practically by other good YouTubers out there that have actually physically tried this in their engines. And as I've said, it's all okay to start with, but it results in engine damage eventually. So would I recommend you put it in your vehicle? No way. But would I recommend that you use it for the kind of intended purposes I've mentioned? Absolutely. And as I've shown, I've based it largely on viscosity and temperature. But these wouldn't be the only factors involved here. The actual makeup, the ingredients of WD-40, would be very, very different to the usual engine oil. And so that would play a big influence as well. Okay, so that concludes my explanation from my opinion on whether or not WD-40 can be used as engine oil. And please, if you have benefited from this video, then please do like and subscribe. And that will help me reach my content out to other people. And if you want to know more about engine oil and the way they work, I do have a couple of videos here on YouTube, so please do check them out. Thank you for watching.